Uh, my full names are uh, Peter Ching Dao. Uh, Peter Dao is uh, my father, the former legend, Kenya legend. Um, growing up, it was uh, it was like a household name. Uh, everybody was talking about Peter Dao. Uh, his famous goals for Gormaya. Whenever we talk, we walk with the dad uh, in the streets, anywhere in this country. People always shout his name. Hey, people are like, Peter Dao, Peter Dao. I'm like, hey. Personally, for me, um, I've never had any issues with him. He's a good listener. He's understanding. Always supportive. Always wanting to help where he can. On a human level, I can say he's a good human being. Years back uh, in 1964, I was born in Kericho, uh, where my old man used to work uh, with Majani Chai. I, I started my primary school in Kericho, a school called uh, Kimugu Primary. I joined nursery school there and uh, proceeded to up to 1994. Then, uh, when I was doing my class five, I went to a school called Aria. Aria is a school where most students were Asians, and I think we were the few, uh, I could say, blacks who were there then, uh, where I did uh, my standard five and standard six. That's in Kericho. Then from Kericho, I proceeded to Kisumu in Aria Primary School. Coincidentally, Aria Primary School also was an Asian school. Still, uh, the few blacks who were there uh, came to be one of them. So I joined Study 6 in Aria, then uh, did my CP, that is in uh, 1977. Then I uh, passed well and uh, proceeded to high school, St. Mary's School in Yala, uh, which I joined in 1978. So in 81, I did. Uh, my Form 4, I performed slightly not bad. My dad thought I never did well, so I had to repeat again. So I repeated uh, Form 4 in a school called Ramba, and I more or less got the same results. So then uh, for high school, I proceeded to a school called Greenfields College in Kitale. Uh, Greenfields College, Kitale, that was in uh, 84, 85. So I completed my sixth form in 1985. Then uh, in 1986, I joined the railway training uh, school. Present now it's uh, RTI, uh, where I did a course in uh, clerical duties as station clerk. Uh, and during that time when I was in college, uh, I was already as an employee of Kenya Railways. So I actually joined Kenya Railways uh, in 1986 after completing my, my clerical uh, training. Uh, the love of football actually started when I was still young. That was in Kimugu Primary. Then I was a young boy and uh, I think then I used to play as a goalkeeper. So throughout Almost uh, half of my primary school, I played as a goalkeeper. So when I was in Form 1, I loved football because I found the likes of uh, the late Ben Olo, breakdowns, who was in St. Mary's Yala, uh, the late Eric Omonge, uh, the other name was known as Yaboma. He was in the same school. So when I was in Form 1, they actually in Form 2. So, they motivated me because I loved football and saw the way they were playing football. So when I joined from two and then from three, actually I was put in the school team as one of the youngest players in St. Mary's School. So now not as a goalkeeper, but now as a striker. So by the time I was in from three in St. Mary's Yala, I was actually in the first 11. 
and competed in uh, most of the school uh, football competitions, which won most of the trophies uh, in CIA. So when I completed Form 4, and uh, during that time, actually I'd played for some, some teams in CIA, uh, like uh, CIA United, it was a good team playing uh, playing uh, the provincial league that time. We also had the Yala teachers. They also played the uh, provincial league in Yala. So when I was in school, in the school school, at the same time I was playing for some teams playing in uh, the lower league, which actually gave me easy time to understand and uh, to get experience in playing football. So when I joined uh, Railway Training School in 86, we had the Kikoso Games. So when we have the Kikoso Games in 86, and uh, I emerged the top scorer in the tournament, it was held in Meru. Then uh, from there, I actually met a lot of players uh, from other big teams, Gorome and FC, who were playing for the corporate uh, teams. That was the parastatal, sorry, like APA, Kenya Airways, if, uh, a meet of works. So out of that tournament is when I actually joined Gormai in 1986. We had players like Samuel uh, Nyango Jogo, uh, Bobo Gola, uh, John Nyango Dembo. The trio were playing for Posta and at the same time they were playing for Gormai. So I think uh, they sneaked my name out to the Gourmet team manager then, uh, the late uh, Oma, may his soul rest in peace. And uh, he approached me after the games and told me that some players from Gourmet actually saw me playing while doing the games, if I could actually join Gourmet which I never turned around, I just said, it's, it's okay. And that time, uh, I think Gormai uh, had uh, uh, the Ab Abdallah Shebe, who was a striker then, may his soul rest in peace. Goro Rongo was also there. Mm. Hez Bonomono was also there. All these were strikers, all of them were strikers. So when I came in, they, were, they faced off, so they all left. So I got a good chance to prove my ability as a striker. Um, growing up, it was, uh, it was like a household name. Uh, everybody was talking about Peter Dow, uh, his famous goals for Gormaya. Uh, my late father was uh, a huge, huge fan of him. So personally, as a kid, I didn't know much about him. But uh, from what I, have, I could hear about, uh, about him from my father, uh, kind of like, you know, um, I started developing an interest of getting to know this Peter Dow. Uh, well, with life you never know. Uh, years down the line, um, I'm with Peter Dow, working in the same uh, department and uh, he's, he's up there. So for me personally, it's a, it's a dream come true. Yeah, from someone your father used to talk about and now you're seeing him in person. I think it's a, it's a good feeling. We really didn't have a uh, clear footage of Dada because uh, we never even uh, watched one of his games back in 1987. I wasn't even born then. But all I can say is uh, Dad is a very great player. Uh, mentioning uh, one of the Kenyan legends, if a few may come above, uh, I don't think if anyone could uh, be on top of him because he really made Kenya proud as a country in terms of sports. It feels nice, uh, I feel great, I feel honored as, a, as his child and uh, whenever we talk, we walk with the dad uh, in the streets, anywhere in this country, people always shout his name, his name always comes up every time, yeah, people are like Peter Dow, Peter Dow, I'm like hey.
النهائي لكاس افريقيا الانديه الفائزه بالكؤوس تتعدى الكره تم علي بن نجم اختيرها والهدف الثاني والهدف الثاني عن طريق بيتر داو بيتر داو في الدقيقه 4 ذا موست ميموريبل ماتش ان فاكت از نوت ان 87 وي وي بلايد وين وي وان ذا مانديلا كاب نو اي ثينك ات واز ذا كوارتر فاينلز ذا كوارتر فاينلز Uh, we played against uh, Dragons, I think of Benin. Uh, that was the semi-finals, the match was at Nyayo Stadium. We played away in Benin. We drew 1-1. Then uh, we had the return leg uh, two weeks later. That was in Nairobi, the match was staged at Nyayo Stadium. And uh, when the game started, I think Magongo scored a goal. Then within seconds, they actually equalized. The ball was brought again. After a few seconds again, then I scored. In the first half, this was in the first half. Then a few seconds again, they also score again. 2-2. So that was in the first half. The match continued 2-2. almost towards the end of uh, the second half. Now on away goal now, they're going through to the finals because it was going to be 1-1 in Benin and 2-2 in Nairobi. So uh, the fans started getting out of the stadium and people were annoyed, uh, we were losing and uh, uh, the team was not actually going to the finals. So fortunately, unfortunately, the ball gets out and uh, out of play. Tobias Ochoa, who was a long ball thrower, gets the ball. I think it was in the 90th minute. Then uh, throws the ball and it lands on my head, and I place the ball in. And uh, there we were, 3-2, and we qualified for the finals. And only to see the fans coming back again to the stadium. So that was my most memorable match. Uh, the first match I played was uh, in 1988. We actually went to the quarters. of the same tournament. We beat the team, I think, uh, in Nairobi. It's a Congolese team. We beat them in Nairobi, I think it was 1-0. Then we went for the return leg, uh, that was in Congo, Brazzaville. Uh, we were met with a lot of frustrations first, because we guys were locked at the airport. We stayed at the airport for about nine hours without uh, any help from the host federation. Then uh, after being released, then uh, we actually taken to the hotel, went to the hotel. Uh, now the following day, because uh, the match was, I think, was uh, three days after we landed in Brazzaville. So the following day we were supposed to train, so we actually requested for a training ground. And uh, we were taken to Uh, army camp where there's no field and uh, it was all sand and uh, our coach the late Jack Johnson may still rest in peace so they placed and told the players we can't train here we are not army people we cannot train here let's go back to the hotel so you guys went back to the hotel and uh, actually just warmed up of the guard inside the hotel uh, in readiness for tomorrow's match. So the following day when we had uh, the match now, we not even visited the stadium. We didn't even know uh, the type of ground we were going to play on. We were given about 10 minutes to fill the, fill the pitch with all the security men around the pitch, actually frightening players. So we took about 10 minutes filling the ground, we went back and we lost 4-0 and we never proceeded the semi-finals. That's my worst match. Uh, football, I can play number nine or number seven, striker, because I can use both my legs to, let's say, score a goal. Yeah, so it has never been an issue. Uh, when I joined uh, high school, I joined uh, football. I played football for around one and a half months. 
and uh, I gained a little interest in uh, basketball. So I played basketball and football, but I got stuck in between. I didn't know to balance which side. Though basketball was not competitive as such, but I used to play part-time football and part-time I used to play basketball. Uh, that was like, you're still playing basketball, you should be playing football because uh, I played football too. And I was like, Dad, no, you see, if I'm still under sports, if I couldn't be playing basketball, then that could be an issue. But if I could play basketball and still juggle with football, I can still fall under any place. So it was not a really big issue for him. And he was also concerned about my studies. My, my son played football at a tender age, but I didn't encourage him. Why? Because I saw what I actually gained when playing football. What did I gain? To me, it was fame and, and that's it. And that fame was not putting any food on the table. So if he went to school and studied and uh, maybe got a good job, then uh, we'll actually help him. And that has actually happened. Now. So he never played football. He's graduated and uh, has done a good course. So I don't blame him for not following my footsteps. But instead he turned, he's doing at least some games, he's playing basketball, but not very competitive, but he's playing. I can believe uh, I'm as tough as he is in, in the field. Um, and I can also say that, uh, you see, let's say when I meet up with my friends back in school, back here at high school and even campus, People tell me like, I'm born to chase the babako. Babako na kukila pali. I'm born to party. Nini zake? So I'm like, uh, I'll just join because uh, I was currently doing some course which I couldn't balance that much. Yeah, and uh, I can also say I can, as I told you, I like and uh, I can play good football better than him. I actually embraced his dribbling technique on the line. Of, uh, of the pitch, but uh, him, he was known by scoring uh, goals by his header. Actually, uh, I have countless goals that I've scored with my head back in high school, because in high school is where I played football best, not in campus. What I think uh, actually made football uh, so interesting during the time it was passion first. Every player used to have passion for the match, uh, passion to play football, and also passion to play for his country, passion to play for his club. And like now, when players are not paid, they usually sabotage the team or they won't play. Well, when you were growing up, uh, I couldn't say that uh, I never knew much about that until when I reached my early 10 years to come, 10 years uh, and above there. So uh, I started seeing some trophies in the house and I was like, Dad, what are all these trophies about? He started telling me you're playing football. He was showing me some pictures, some albums. So uh, I started knew what kind of father that we are having as a family. So I, I can say that Dad is uh, he's strong is sentimental, is very hardworking, he really cares about us. Back in 2010, yeah, we were going to watch some Gormahia games back in City Stadium and also witness the Sakata Ball Challenge, which was back there at uh, around 2011. Gormahia and FC, I think uh, that was the best rivalry. Why? Uh, there's a time when the government said, uh, the government, I think uh, the late President Moy talked about uh, not wanting the tribal clubs. But to me, the tribal clubs actually brought uh, the competition very, uh, very competitive. So when uh, the tribal clubs were like almost done away with, then the competition bit of it actually came down. The rivalry between God and FC has been there for quite some time, especially during my days. Uh, I can remember this one of the matches, uh, not even one, some of the matches, when you go to the pitch before the game starts, already the fans, the fans had fought, the tear has been thrown, 
You see, during those days, we never used to have EPL addiction life. I think uh, it used to be football made in German. It's the only football which was seen on telly. So people had nowhere and nothing now to watch. So the only thing uh, they could watch in football was just to watch the local clubs. And this actually uh, was a good data to Kenyan football. And like now, people are going to the stadium and uh, if you go to a small den where people are watching EPL, you get millions and thousands of people watching uh, EPL. We don't blame the government on that because if I put on a Chelsea t-shirt, the government doesn't come in there. What I think is uh, the generation which is there now, uh, you got the parents already into that and the children go grow following what their parents follow. Because you get most of the family, like uh, you get their wife, the Arsenal, and uh, the husband is Chelsea, and the kids also, Mimi Niko Arsenal, Mimi Niko Chelsea. Why then they say Mimi Niko Gor, uh, Niko FC? We don't have that one nowadays, simply because of this APL. This is NTV. Own your dream home from as low as 1.98 million Kenyan shillings within the popular and rapidly expanding prime neighborhood of Vipingo Kilifi. Call us today on 0740-400-215. What credentials does Gabriel have to be worthy of assuming her duties while you're away? Can he handle the